In their affliction, they will seek me early. He says, in their affliction, that's when they're going to understand something is wrong. That's when they're going to understand, whoa, wait a minute. Something is not right with my life. I keep doing this and nothing is really prospering. Something got to be wrong. Every time I turn on the news, I'm noticing my people are the ones that are getting shot down by the, by, by the other nations. My people are the ones that are strung out on drugs. You go to the neighborhoods. We're living in the lowest conditions of society. Something is not right. You start thinking. God says, I'm allowing that so that they can return back to me and seek my face. The same way we as parents do with our children. First thought when you wake up in the morning, it should be, thank you, God, for waking me up this morning. Okay. So there's more to that. That's, that's, that's good, but there's more to it. Read this. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So God says my people are destroyed. A lot of us don't know that, that we're destroyed. We think we're every, everything is okay today. You understand? Some people might know. My sister right here, she already is already thinking. You're thinking. A family over here, they got the fringes on, sister with the hair wrap. So they got some kind of information that let them know, wait a minute, wait a minute. The way that we right. used to live in this earth is off. There's something wrong. It's something that we got to still learn. But majority of the people we on this side, the Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are what? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We are a destroyed people because we lack knowledge. The brother earlier today, he was trying to deal with him but he was too stubborn to listen. That's why he's gonna remain destroyed if he don't repent. Because he would be on. Because thou has rejected knowledge. What did he do earlier? Has rejected knowledge. Earlier the brother was rejecting the knowledge. We had multiple men up here reading the Bible, giving them the answers, the solutions, asking them questions, trying to deal with them in his mind. But what did he keep doing? I will rejected knowledge. Right, so, so because people like that brother earlier reject knowledge, I will also reject thee. God says, I'm also going to reject you. You got children? How many? Two. How old are they? 11 and 10. 11 and 10. That's your son? Yeah, I got two. You got two more? So you got three children? All right, so I'm going to ask you a, a, a parental question. If you tell your children, I want you to come back inside at 8 o'clock p.m., right? And after a period of time, they start coming in 8.30, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. What are you going to do? What is your, are you shaking your head no. What are you going to do to your children? Remind them. You're going to remind them? Curfew at 8 o'clock. Curfew, hey, curfew at 8 o'clock. I'm going to remind you, right? I'm going to remind you. Okay, now let's say that goes on for two months straight. They keep coming in 9 o'clock. Now nah, nah, he ain't going to do nothing. 9.30, I'll come in. He all right, my dad is too cool. Wait. Oh, no, I'm not cool. Um, you can sit in the house for two weeks. You can sit in the house for two weeks, right? Two weeks, a month, whatever I decide. Now watch this. Now what if the children say, Dad, yo, the new PlayStation is coming out. Uh, you mind if I get that? I'm going to get some games with it. Ooh, hit my heart right there. Um, hit your heart right there. Why? I'm a, I'm a video gamer. You're a video gamer. Okay, perfect. That's the spirit. Um, I would, do, I would do the same thing I was taught. You know, just bring them to the hood. And then at some point, I had to let it go. And let them be them and see if they're wrong. All right, so watch this, watch this. I'm going I'm to I'm re-bring the scenario back up. Your son, right? Let's just say your son. You told him to come back in the house at 8 p.m. Oh, he ain't even showing up at the And for two months straight, he's coming back at 930. Not listening to any of the instruction you gave him. You're not getting no PlayStation. You ain't getting no PlayStation. Matter of fact, go back in the room and you're going to write down a hundred times, I will come back in the house at 8 p.m. You know what I'm saying? You're going to reject him. Yeah. Anything that he asked for, you're going to reject it. Oh, that's Sisters, that, w w what would that be in your scenario? If your children, let's say you told, you said you have two more? What's your oldest son, uh, child? My oldest son is two. He's two? Okay, so he's still in the, your young phase. Okay. What's something that you have done or rejected from him based off of the things you're teaching him so far? Um, I know he likes to hit. He likes to hit? Yeah, that's okay, okay. Yeah, like, that's a disrespectful side to him. Like, you don't want to hit nobody. And if you can hit the hit, what's something that you can do to teach that two-year-old, don't hit again? I usually 
put him in timeout. So you reject the freedom. You you put him in timeout so that way he doesn't have that freedom to go around and continue hitting to teach him a lesson. That's that's the we 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 do that as parents, but God operates in the same way. You understand? Go to. What's that? Hosea 5? 5 15. 15. Yes, Watch this. Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15. So in the same book, next chapter. I will go and return to my place. God says, look, I'm going to go and return to my place. Till they acknowledge their offense. Until my people acknowledge the fact that they have broken my commandments. Until they acknowledge that. I'm going to go and return to my place. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to deal with y'all. Whatever situation you go through, whatever trials and tribulations and troubles you face in life, based off of your decision of not keeping my commandments, I'm going to do what? I will go and return to my place uh -huh. till they acknowledge their offense. Uh -huh. And then what am I do next? And seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. In their affliction, they will seek me early. He says, in their affliction, that's when they're going to understand something is wrong. Right. That's when they're gonna understand. Whoa, wait a minute. Something is not right with my life. I keep doing this and nothing is really prospering. Something got to be wrong. Every time I turn on the news, I'm noticing my people are the ones that are getting shot down by the by, by the other nations. My people are the ones that are strung out on drugs. You go to the neighborhoods. We're living in the lowest conditions of society. Something is not right. You start thinking. God says, I'm allowing that so that they can return back to me and seek my face. The same way we as parents do with our children. You don't listen to what I say? I'm going to bring judgment. I'm going to bring uh, conditions to wake your mind up and say, you know what? I'm not going to do that no more. That's the lesson that we learn as children of God. You understand? If you get time later today, we got our classes open. Come and learn more. Especially you as a man in this community. Because you, you have something that you have to do here. Why? That's why you're still living. You got a chance to make a difference. Or else you'd be already dead. You understand? Sis, you got any other questions of what you learned so far? What other questions? Do you believe in the Bible? Do you love God? Um, I do, but I feel like, okay, like, people, they worship. Like, in the Bible, it's so, like, Your heart, you get it, it's a business. But I feel like, okay, the people that like they grow up they in churches and they do everything right, like stuff like that. That's what happened to them. All right, the people that go to church are they learning the laws of God? That's the question. Because the whole topic right now is keeping the commandments of God. So, the people that go to church on a daily basis, every Sunday, if they're not keeping the commandments of God, like the Bible says, then bad things will happen to them. Like we just read it in Deuteronomy 28. Go back to verse 15. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right, so that's the curses that's going to come upon our people for not following God's commandments. People in church, they're not taught the laws of God. Not all of them. Especially, uh, especially the ones that, are, that, that they, they say that they love God and they know him, yet they don't understand how to keep the Sabbath day. Like today. Today's a Sabbath day. What are we not supposed to do on a Sabbath day as Israelites? We're not supposed to buy. We're not supposed to sell. We're not supposed to cook. We're supposed to come together amongst other believers. Those basic things on the Lord's holy day, a lot of people in church don't do. So it's no, it's no surprise that they keep going through affliction, like you said. That makes sense? What other questions you got? Okay. Yep. Give me, uh, give me um, 1 Timothy 2 and 11. I'm going to start there. So it says, I'm going to deal with something real quick. So you know you're an Israelite, based off of everything today so far. You know your tribe, Zebulon. I want you to read, I want you to hear this right here. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also, that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. What is modest apparel? Um, 
I guess like. My okay, modest apparel. Modest apparel is apparel that doesn't reveal anything about your body. All right, modest apparel. All right. So the women of the Israelites are supposed to dress in modest apparel. Read on. With shamefacedness and sobriety, shamefacedness and sobriety. All right. Not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Not saying that you can't braid your hair or wear jewels, but it's saying that the outward appearance should not define who you are. Right. So, in understanding what this is, give me up Deuteronomy 22. You're going to read that and I'm going I'm to show you something. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall, shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man. Uh -huh. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. When it says a man should not put on a woman's garment, what does a man wearing a woman's garment look like? Okay, like a man wearing a uh, what? A skirt, a dress, right? So what's the opposite where it says the woman should not wear that which pertains to a man? Um. I'll read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What is something that men wear that defines him as being a man based off of what he's wearing? Bathroom sign. Um, when you look at the bathroom sign, and you see the two symbols. Which one, how do you know which one is the women's bathroom and the men's bathroom? The men don't got nothing on. And the females got like a dress. The, so the females have the dress on, and the men have the what on? Shorts. The pants. Shorts, pants, same thing, right? So, read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. I was saying the woman should not wear what? The woman should not wear pants or right. or shorts. You didn't know that, but it, we're reading it because we're going to show it to you. That way, at this point, you can understand this is one of the laws of God that I got to apply as one of the children of Israel, right? So we're not reading it saying, oh, you're wrong, but we're, we're showing you, listen, okay, maybe I didn't know that. Let me apply this to my life. Let me stop wearing pants and shorts. Let me put on a dress. But earlier in First Timothy, go back to that. I'm going to deal with it. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. Yeah, you said you got three children? Uh, that's your, your husband? Uh, we're not married yet. Not married yet. Okay. Read on. In like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So would your boyfriend be okay with the way you're dressed right now? Out in public? Um, yeah, if he was with you. If he was with you, why? Why, why, if he was with you, would he be okay with it? Um, his thing is, like, if you just start wearing them, then men don't look at you. Like, you feel like if he there, he can kind of, like, I guess shoot. You shoot from what? Like, I guess stuff that come with it. Like. Stuff that come with it. Yeah. So, he understands when you dress the way you're dressing, it's going to attract other men sexually in a negative way he's he's not comfortable with that that's why he said he has to be with you you understand no man is going to want that kind of attention to the woman that he's supposed to be with and marry that's why you have to be in a modest apparel right because you're not supposed to attract that attention from the other man that's how our women are supposed to dress because then that's going to lead to other things it's going to lead to adultery it's going to lead to envy hatred you understand um, read it again and like men are also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel All right, go, go to uh, uh, Exodus 22 16 Exodus 22 and 16 so that's a law that you actually have to start applying okay you got to understand you know what I'm, I'm a princess I'm a child of God I'm, the, I'm not supposed to dress like that and come out in public with it that's for your man to see. But, read this. Exodus chapter 22 and verse 16. And if a man entice a maid. So if a man entice a maid, right? He, 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 he understood who you are, got to know you, stuff like that. Right? Read on. That is not betrothed. He wasn't promised to nobody else at the time. Right? 
and lie with her and have sex with you. To have children, read. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. He's supposed to marry you. He has to marry you. You have to look at him and say, you need to marry me. We got it. All this that we're doing right here, this is supposed to be done in marriage. Righteously, you know, in the eyes of God. You understand? Why is that important? Because, what, number one, it's the law of God. Go to Hebrews 13 and 5. I'm going to show you this. That's an honorable thing in the sight of the Lord. If you say you love God, if he's supposed to love God as a man, he's supposed to do this. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed under foul. Because a marriage is an honorable thing. That's instituted by God himself. He created that marriage. And that's supposed to be honorable. The bed is undefiled. What y'all do in that bed, that's undefiled under the laws of God. Read. But whoremongers, the opposite, un falls into the category of whoremongers. Read. And adulterers. Read, read on. God will jump because whoremongery and adultery, it stems from non-marital relationships. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that. If let's say y'all go through arguments, I'm, I'm assuming, right? Every, every relationship has the ups and downs. When y'all go through the roughest arguments, what's stopping him from walking out and leaving? It also says it's better that some remain unmarried. No, we're not talking to you right now. Hold on. What's stopping him from leaving? What's that? There's, there's plenty of people that leave women with their kids, single moms and single parents. There's plenty of our brothers that sleep with a woman, lay with her, impregnate her, have a baby, and then bounce. Out, leave, gone. Now you have children growing up without a father in the house. You have bitter mothers because at one point she thought he was there for the long run. But then something happened and he decided to leave. You understand? Once he goes with another woman, now he's in the midst of adultery. There's whoremongering all over the land of our people, our neighborhoods. Do you not see a lot of single mothers in our neighborhoods? Yes or no? Right? A lot of our men are not in the households because of that one simple law they don't follow. Not marrying that sister. You label it, so you're supposed to marry that woman. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 